Thank you for joining us today at Clackamas News Online, your online source to current events and activities on campus. I'm Katie Archer. And I'm Alberto Hernandez. Several students on campus cope with physical or mental disabilities. We investigated how the school is helping these students. Today we are talking about the possible challenges faced by those with accessibility and learning disabilities on the Clackamas Community College campus. We addressed these issues with faculty members from the Veterans Resource Center, Distance Learning Center, and Disability Resource Center. Uh, well, at the Distance Learning Center, uh, we again are, uh, we've had experience working on grant projects and other uh, projects where uh, ADA compliance is important. And we subscribe to the idea of universal design, which means that if you make something more accessible, in, in, in a nutshell, and it means you make something more accessible to a particular audience, you make it more accessible to everybody. And the idea behind that is, for instance, closed captioning was maybe in initially intended to help the uh, hearing impaired be able to follow what's being said on the screen, but now it's being used in airports and bars where no one can hear, and now, so everyone therefore benefits from that technology, right? We discovered a major safety issue for people who need to use the automatic door opener. Some of them swing open much too fast. Individuals using a cane or crutches could have their support knocked away, resulting in a loss of balance. This could cause injuries. Where does the funding come from? Is that federal funded? For, for the VA, the, yeah, it is the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. So that, is, that is federal dollars. And um, any veteran has access to it. Anybody who served can file a claim for um, for disability with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, if they if they find that a veteran is service connected in any way, then they would be able to receive potential comp compensation and health care for whatever that condition is uh, as a result of their service. There are a number of resources available for people needing additional support. Dye Learning Center features academic tutors and areas for research work, as well as a computer lab. I like to think that resources are individual based on the student, so we can have a lot of different resources, but depending on what the student need might be, then we'll know more about what, how we can serve that student. But generally, we work with students to coordinate accommodations in the classroom and in the testing we also have a list of individuals who do assessments for learning disabilities if a student thinks they may have a learning disability but they haven't been formally diagnosed. We have a list of people that we can refer into the community for that. We also work with faculty and talk with them about serving students in their classroom with disabilities and we can come in and talk to students in the classroom about our office. Um, those are the main services that we provide. We also do outreach in the community, working with high schools for students who are getting ready to graduate and come to college. And uh, I personally work with some organizations in the local Portland community that have to do with disability advocacy. Academic resources are abundant for those who need them. The handicapped stalls in the bathroom, the automatic door openers, and elevators to get to classes on the upper levels and services from the Disability Resource Center seem to be the major resources for those people. Being a new college student can be a stressful time while getting prepared for your classes. Students at Clackamas Community College share their attitudes towards FAFSA and how it can be beneficial. 22 million students across the country use the government's free application for federal student aid or FAFSA. Here at CCC, 72% of the student body takes advantage of financial aid to offset some of their college expenses. My financial aid is covering just about every, just about all of it each term. It covers about 100%. My financial aid is covering all of my classes at the moment. Basically, I wouldn't be able to attend school without FAFSA and other scholarships I've received. Financial aid has been very helpful. It paid for a lot of if not all my classes in the past. I've taken, I had youth financial aid at the Clackamas Community College and PCC. They've covered both my classes and books. While financial aid can cover most of student expenses, many students find the FAFSA application process long and complicated. 
The application process for the FAFSA was a bit confusing, to be honest. A lot of it I needed help with, which I got from my financial aid advisor at my high school, as well as my mother, who helped me complete that parental portion of the FAFSA. For me personally, I had to get assistance because some of the concepts were new and how they worded the questions were just rather difficult to understand. So I had to get a lot of assistance on filling it out. The application processing times can vary. So the best tip from students was to complete your documents as soon as possible. I completed my FAFSA in February, I believe. Earlier the better is what they always say. And to be honest, I sort of slack this year. Last year I completed it in January, but life got a hold of me. I got mine done uh, way past the deadline. Like There was no money left and I did it and then it took about 13 weeks, 14 weeks for the money to come in, but that was probably my fault. It's a long growing process, but completing your FAFSA can be a huge step toward financial freedom. Financial aid has benefited me completely because I, I wouldn't be able to attend college without it. I basically rely on it to do everything I'm doing right now. I wouldn't be standing here without it. Well, it's helped me a lot as a college student. I have to cover a lot of things. You know, you have your transportation, you got your food supply, your, your rent, your car, your gas. So. It helps me pay off my classes while I can focus on working just to pay off my bills, my phone bills, my house bills, my food bills, so it's really healthy actually. It's benefited me a lot, um, going to school for free pretty much, and I got a baseball scholarship so that money goes in my pocket while the financial aid pays for my actual terms, which is really nice, so it is, it's helped me a lot. Oh man, I wouldn't be able to even go to college if it wasn't for the financial aid. It, it's just way too hard to try to work full time and, and go to school full time. I'm taking like 14 to 16 credits a term, so it, I just don't have time to work. Students live busy lives. One of the main challenges is balancing a work and a school schedule. Our reporters asked around to get an understanding on how students handle their busy lives. Here at Clackamas Community College, students must set aside time for friends, class, and extracurricular activities. However, some students also set aside time for work outside of school. I am a part-time student online. I take each two courses this term and I work here at Hagen's. I have been here for 14 and a half years. I work at a retirement facility in Lake Oswego, busing tables. I do have a part-time job currently at Fred Meyer in Canby, Oregon. I worked at Forever 21 for a year and a half. It was basically the first job I got once I turned 18 and started at college. Although it may seem simple, juggling schoolwork and workloads can be difficult at times. And I mostly stay at school when I'm at school, so I go to classes and I study at school, and then I go to my job, and then I go home and study some more. And I try to go to bed early. Going to bed early is one of my biggest motivators right now, so I can get the rest that I need to study the next day and go to work. I wouldn't say that it's that easy to juggle the workload in the school. It does get, sometimes I, I'm here really late at night till 8.30 and have to be back at 8 in the morning. So yeah, it is a little stressful, but the online classes are okay. It's just for an older gal like I am. Some of it getting back, like the one course I'm doing now, she wants everything, quotes and sites and things like that, and do it in a specific way. So I have to do a lot of research, thank goodness for Google, and so find out how exactly I'm supposed to do it. So. I rely entirely on my job for school because I don't have scholarships or really any financial aid, so my job pretty much pays for my entire school. I'm currently trying to get back into work. I just um, applied at Ross on Monday I think it was because I left school. I did my quiz and then I left school to take the interview. And as soon as I got to my availability, I could tell he was done. He was just like, okay, if you, if we're interested, we'll call you and I never got a call back. And I was like, really? Like, I don't understand why retail's being so hard with availability these days. Usually, you know, they are. Of course, it's a little harder for college students because college students are smarter and they're not gonna go for the minimum wage. If you have experience, you know you can get make more money. They want to go for the high school students who are easily, you know, persuaded for, by any bit of money. For those who are looking for work at the moment, these students have a few valuable tips. 
The best way to find a job is to talk to people and to look on Portland Craigslist and places that you think that might have jobs to offer. And you have to make sure that you find a job that works around your schedule, that you, your class schedule. Because if you have something that you have to devote your time to the work, but not the actual classes, then you're kind of limiting yourself to educational opportunities. And so it's kind of good to be able to balance both your work and your school schedule. So I absolutely hate online applications and any job where you can go face to face and talk to somebody, I always try to do that because people try to judge you based off of a piece of paper and if they can actually see your face and your personality they can get to know you better and it's much easier to get a job if they've actually seen you and they put a face to your name, you know. If you are going to go to school and work, make sure it's balanced in a way where you're not sacrificing school, work for work, because then if you're paying for school, if you're going to work so you can pay for school and you're sacrificing your school for work, you're wasting your time. Aside from a typical part-time job, we talked to a local recruiter of a potential alternative to those looking for work. One of the best options, I think, for if you want have any inclination of serving in the armed forces and still want to be a student, I think the National Guard is the best option for you because you get to be a full-time student, part-time soldier. That's one weekend a month and two weeks a year after you're done with your initial training. And then you get to continue staying on campus, going to school, and we help pay for that. You're working for us for one weekend, two days, and the average soldier's getting about $200, $250 a month Plus, we have additional pays, Montgomery GI Bill and some other, plus the $4,500 a year tuition uh, assistance that the Army National Guard offers. On top of that, you have the option of getting full medical and full dental at a discounted rate. Whether one is working or looking for work, Anel has advice for anyone looking to work while attending college. I would think my advice to students that are having a hard time is um, you'd have to sit back to me and judge unfortunately what it is they're trying to go for versus like what they're doing for their job. Meaning like I'm working in the retail and that is where I'm trying to advance in so I don't want to go and cut and be part time here. I want to keep learning more here as I'm working and then also learn online. But I think that if it's, I think the best, best advice is meet with the counselors over there. They are wonderful. I think they give you pretty good advice in helping you figure out what you can do and the best that would be for you. But never give up. Never give up. I'm 55 and I'm back in school now, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's worth it. Thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you again. This is Clackamas News Online. I'm Alberto Hernandez. And I'm Katie Archer. Have a great day.